Hey everybody, I'm back with another Awesome Finds video. This time around, I have a bunch of promo albums. Yeah, these are all promotional copy albums and it just makes me wonder who did these belong to? And there was a bunch more, but a lot of them I passed up because they were just scratched up. I mean, I think someone literally went in there with a vendetta and scratched up these records. It, it was a shame because I really wanted some of them, but the ones I did get, I, I was very happy with. And some of them I took a chance on because each of these albums was only 69 cents, which is almost unheard of these days. So let's get into it. First up are a bunch of soundtracks. First one we got here is the soundtrack soundtrack to Colors. Do you guys remember this movie? I remember this so much. I thought this was everyday life in LA <laughs> when I was a little kid. No, seriously, I, I love this film. Growing up, Sean Penn, Robert Duvall, directed by Dennis Hopper. And the soundtrack's got Ice-T, salt and Peppa, and uh, other people that I don't think went anywhere after here. Oh, Rick James is on here. Interesting. Up next, we got Bright Lights, Big City, starring Michael J. Fox. I had never heard of this film, but look at what's on here. Prince, Depeche Mode, New Order, Brian Ferry. Crazy lineup, and it's amazing I never heard of this film. I want to check it out now with this soundtrack. It's awesome. Then we got Empire of the Sun, Steven Spielberg film. This looks like the motion picture score by John Williams. And this is interesting. It comes with a black plastic sleeve. I hate these, by the way, actually, because they always bunch up and balloon the record sleeve but that's a whole nother matter i love this movie growing up inner space yes oh my gosh i thought this was hilarious as a kid oh i was so happy to find this beetlejuice every time i see this nine times out of ten it's the laser disc it's not the actual soundtrack but this is the soundtrack then we got married to the mob Oh yeah, this is another interesting lineup. We have Debbie Harry, Ziggy Marley, Chris Isaac, New Order, Sinead O'Connor, Brian Eno. So I mean, quite quite the lineup. If you've been watching the program a long time, you know I love James Bond soundtracks and I'm trying to collect all the ones that were released on vinyl. This one's The Living Daylights. So you have two songs by The Pretenders, one by AHA, and the rest is all John Barry music, I believe. I love this artwork for that gun she's hiding. Oh, speaking of guns, Lethal Weapon, the original motion picture soundtrack. Oh yeah. It's performed by Eric Clapton, David Sanborn, and Michael Kamen. So there you go. That'll do it for the soundtracks. Moving on to more popular music. First up we got Sherrick. Is that how you say his name? Oh my gosh, look at that ponytail. That is luscious. This is uh, kind of what you expect it would sound like. Very 80s R&B. Gonna take you home tonight, baby. Okay, I'm gonna mess up this guy's name, but Earl Klug, or Klug, Klug. Clue? Earl Clue? I haven't listened to this yet, or at least I don't remember if I did. This is one of the ones I took a chance on. I'm like, you know what? 69 cents, might as well try. Then I got two by Shaka Khan. This one, it's titled CK. Prince is on here. Miles Davis, George Benson, Stevie Wonder. So quite a guest lineup. I initially was going into this going, I'm not going to like this. I'm not going to like this at all. And I put it on and I kind of liked it. I, I, I don't know. Something's come over me. I'm, I'm kind of digging this stuff. The next Shaka Khan is called Destiny and it features Love of a lifetime for the life of me i can't remember what that song even sounds like i don't remember much about it but i remember liking it i mean i don't know if i'll hang on to this forever but i enjoyed it this is chill factor and i don't remember <laughs> anything about these guys but i love his shirt and this that whole look the soup dragon so cool from 1988 i think this is sort of early, early kind of alternative sounding stuff. But I remember really liking these guys. So check them out. This is Los Lobos with By the Light of the Moon. And believe it or not, this was one of the first concerts I attended. It was 1989, just after the Loma Prieta earthquake that hit San Francisco. Disrupted the World Series, if you remember that. But they did an earthquake relief in Santa Cruz County and Los Lobos was there. And so did, and Santana showed up by helicopter. And I think they were like the backing band for, for Santana. That was the first time I was exposed to that caliber of music and also pot <laughs> not that i took any pot but i remember there were people uh smoking little tiny joints quite the learning experience then i got nick hayward i love you avenue you know I, I don't think i've actually listened to this yet but being that he's the former lead singer of haircut 100 i had to pick it up i got junkyard they were kind of part of the sunset strip 80s hair metal scene and that's a cool picture on the inner sleeve there i like that up next, I believe the band's called Book of Love and the album's called Lullaby. Yeah, I haven't heard it yet. I wanted to take a chance on it. It looked interesting to say the least. Oh, then I got two by AHA. The first one is Scoundrel Days. And this has got Cry Wolf on it, which was, I think, somewhat of a hit. And it's amazing that they had a lot more albums than people give them credit for. 
My second album I got from them are uh, Stay On These Roads. And this is from 1988. Yeah, I haven't heard it yet. Looking forward to it. Then I got Atlantic Star. I knew the name. I took a chance. I listened to it. It's okay. It's a little cheese ball for me, if you can believe that. Then I got R.E.M.'s Green. I thought this was so cool. I think this was the sticker that went on the front plastic, but I could be wrong because it just looks so weirdly stuck on there. Same with this barcode. Oh, you know what? This is actually the track listing, but gosh, it just looks so slapped on there, doesn't it? I don't really understand why they did it that way. But if you guys know, let me know. Oh, I don't know what the heck this is. Chiefs of Relief. Look at that cover art, man. This is from 1988 on Sire records i haven't listened to it if you guys know of this this album let me know honeymoon suite is up next with racing after midnight this is from 1988 it's got an insert they look like kind of hair metal i haven't listened to it yet <laughs> honeymoon suite that's quite the title for a band so then i got the mighty lemon drops and i kind of took a chance on these guys because their name reminded me of a 90s band called the Lemonheads. if i'm remembering that correctly and I listened to it and I really liked it it's sort of like Morrissey and REM but lots of reverb kind of early alternative sound really cool stuff check them out then I got two minds crack I don't know what to say about these guys they're kind of like the poor man's aha if that makes any sense all right then I got figures on a beach they're kind of like in excess that's the only way I can describe them it's okay then I got black and blue in heat now these guys are party rockers totally part of the sunset strip 80s scene they just were having a ball you can just tell there's a dude in diapers they seem like very funny guys oh this is funny send photos and skid mark free panties and then they give their address <laughs> It just cracks me up. I'm sure these guys were really fun to see back in the day. Then I got Belief Nitzer Eb 1988. I looked it up. They consider it industrial music. And that was such a weird term for me growing up because I never knew what that really meant. And then listening to this, I'm like, okay, I get it. As you can see, it's rather dirty. So I will get around to cleaning this up and I think it will come off pretty easily because this is a nice slick surface but this was kind of cool to find i'm looking forward to digging deeper into this album i got sylvester's mutual attraction and uh, this i think was towards it's not his last album but it's, it's getting up there this is from 1986 and yeah i just i mean how much more 80s awesome can you get than this right here they got steve winwood chronicles now this is basically a greatest hits album and it's got a lot of the, the big name stuff i found it kind of uneven i liked valerie and talking back to the night but yeah i'm still on the fence with this then i got the red box the circle and the square and i really enjoyed this album this was definitely a surprise to me i encourage you guys to check this one out oh i was so stoked to find this brian ferry with bets noir yeah 80s Brian Ferry, can't go wrong, awesome album. Up next is a self-titled Chris Isaac album from 1987. I love Chris Isaac. I mean, I mean, I, I love his music. I didn't even know about this album before, so stoked to find it. Then I got The Replacements, Don't Tell a Soul from 1989. And this was such a treat to listen to. I was so happy to find this one. I really like the music on here. I encourage you guys to check this one out. Lastly, I was so surprised to find this. New Order with their album Technique. This is actually my first LP of New Order. I never find their stuff and it tends to be rather expensive. This is from 1989. I like how the barco is just sitting there in the middle. But what was a trip is that I found it, right? And didn't have an inner sleeve. Then the next week I went back to that same thrift store and I randomly found this just hanging out. I bought another record. I stuck this in there and brought it home. And just so neat to find something on vinyl, original issue too cool. Well, that's all the records I have for today. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and remember to keep on digging because you never know what you're going to find. I am your Vinyl Geek and I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>